Before we continue and start adding more loops, there's one more thing I want to change. If you take a look at this object in the top view and render it, you can see we still have a very soft transition here. And if we take a look at our reference image, we do have a fairly sharp corner here. So let's have a look at how we can change that. And there's a couple of ways we could make this corner sharper. So one way would be to select these edges here and then apply edge weighting. And the way this works is you hold down the period key, left click and drag, and you can make this corner as sharp as you want to. The advantage of this is that we don't have to create more geometry. Another way to make this corner sharper would be to select these edges here. I have to switch off torrent selection here and just move these over. So this would also turn this into a sharper corner and we wouldn't create more geometry. The disadvantage is that we cannot move these edges over because it would change the round shape we have here. What we could also do is select these edges here So we could bevel these edges and I'm going to use an offset of five centimeters here. You can see the metering is still set to uniform. So we're getting nice and clean geometry. The disadvantage is that we're creating more edges and we're also getting some very dense areas over here. So if we don't want that, what we could also do is we could select these polygons here and then go to select outline selection and we're getting an edge selection like this and now what we can do is use the slide tool hold down control to clone these edges and if we do that we're getting the geometry that we need to sharpen these corners and we're going to keep this detail encapsulated in this area here so none of the edges is going over to the center of the object. And now we could select these edges here and use the slide tool again to slide these over a bit. And we could do the same thing over here. So select these edges and slide them over. And then we could slide some of these points around So we would end up with something like this. And the nice thing is that, like I said, we would encapsulate this detail in this area. We still have this loop working here. So that would be another way to add sharpness to this corner. I'm going to stick with this version here. So now let's have a look at what we can do to add more loops. The question always is, is it really necessary? And frankly, the answer is not really, not all the time. The only reason to add more edge loops and thus more geometry would be if you want to add more detail. So for example, let's assume we need a loop going like this to the center of the object and not around to the bottom of the object in order to make it easier to add details in here. That means we would have to change the edge flow to create the geometry that we need. And usually I would only add the geometry that I really need to create that detail. So in this case, what we could do is select these edges here and then use the slide tool, hold down control to clone these edges in. And we could then use the line cut tool to make two cuts like this and then dissolve these edges here. So we would get four sided polygons and we now have a working loop 
that would make it easier to add more detail in this area. But of course, changing the geometry can also have an effect on other loops. So in this case, we're getting some partial loops here, a loop like this. And if I select these polygons, I'm getting a pretty weird loop that stops over here. So let's try and clean this up. And what I want to do in order to get everything looping nicely, we're going to have all of these edges in this area loop around the side of the object here. So let's go to edge mode and I'm going to dissolve these edges here. We can use these two. And the first thing I want to do now is I want to change the flow of the geometry over here. So what we can do is we can select this edge here and we can spin it. Now I don't want this edge to be connected to these edges down here because I want a loop going around the object like this. So in order to make that happen, we would have to create an extra edge loop here. Let's dissolve this edge here and let's connect these two points here and dissolve this edge. And for now, I'm also going to get rid of these edges here. So now we would have a working loop around the bottom of the object, and we would also get a loop like this. In order to get the rest of this geometry looping around the side of this object, we just have to connect the edges properly. So what that means is over here, instead of having these edges connected to this point, we need the we need to connect these edges to this point here. So I'm going to select these two points and connect them. And let's get rid of this edge here. So that means we have two edges that we have to bring over to here. And we have two edges over here that we can continue along the side of this object. So let's select all of these edges here and just use edge cut with two subdivisions. And we have to reconnect some of the points here. So in point mode, I'm going to connect these two points, dissolve this edge, connect these points and dissolve this edge and this one. And over here, we have some very stretched polygons. So let's go ahead and do a ring selection here and connect these edges. And then we can go back to point mode and just move some of these points around to get better looking topology. So now we should have working loops everywhere here. So we got this one and this one and we have everything looping the way we want it to loop. We also have this polygon loop here at the bottom. We have two nice loops going here. So all that's left to do is to redistribute the geometry and spread it out a little more evenly. I'm not going to make you watch me do this for 10 minutes. So I've already prepared an object where I've done that. So I'm going to switch to a new file here. And this is the finished object. It has exactly the same geometry that we just created. And all I've changed here is I've redistributed the geometry to make it look a little more even. Let's check our loops. We have our main details encapsulated in their own areas. We have loops like this. We also have this loop here. We have a nice loop going here all the way around the object. We have a loop inside here. So everything's looping. And of course we have these loops over here. So the result we got is looking pretty nice. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks for watching everyone and take care.